Well, some of you might know I wrote um, three books about bats. Um, the earliest was Silverwing about 10 years ago. And after Silverwing was Sunwing, and after Sunwing was Firewing. And I got pretty interested in bats during that time. Um, and one of the things I got interested about was the, um, the origins of bats. Bats are very, very, very old animals. They've been flapping around in the skies of our world for millions and millions and millions of years. And we have a bat fossil, not me personally. When I say we, I mean you know, the scientific community has a bat fossil that's 50 million years old. And the remarkable thing about it is when they reconstructed it and tried to imagine what this creature looked like, they discovered it looked almost identical to a modern day bat. So you had very few physical differences between this 50 million year old bat and a bat that would be flapping around in your backyard at night. So what scientists deduced from this is that 50 million years ago, bats were already pretty much fully evolved. So they started wondering, well, how far back in time would we have to go to find um, a pre-bat, the ancestors of bats? Now, this would be the creature, the theoretical creature that, um, that a bat was before it learned how to fly. Now, some scientists think that the ancestors of bats were little shrew-like creatures that lived in trees, they had claws, but they also had these long flaps of skin between their arms and their legs that allowed them to glide. And they would live in trees and they would glide from tree to tree going down all the time and intercept insects, and that would be their form of food. And some scientists think that they had a very primitive form of echolocation that allowed them to target these bugs as they glided. So I really like the idea of telling a story um, about these first creatures, the ancestors of bats, and um, using some scientific theory and my own imagination, I created something called a chiropter. Uh, which I just read uh, to you about now. Dusk is the main character. He is a chiropter. His colony are gliders, and they live in this enormous um, sequoia tree. It's a 300-foot tall tree, giant redwood tree, 65 million years ago. This is the era in which I decided to set my book. So it really is the, the story of the very first bat. Is there a reason why there's a great deal of flying in my books? I... Um, I don't know. I'm sort of resisting the urge to psychoanalyze myself and do that. But um, all, I, all I will say is, um, I, I guess it is, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mild fascination uh, with me. I had some amazing flying dreams when I was younger. Maybe that's a part of it. Um, I think most of all, it's, uh, w the appeal for me is that it's, it's something that we can't do. So it's, a, it's something that belongs for humans in a kind of imaginary realm. And we can fly with mechanical aids, but of course we can't fly on our own. Um, and so it's very, I find it very interesting to try and imagine you know, through these other creatures or these other worlds, uh, the possibility of, of, of flying and what it would feel like and how exciting it would be. Um, and certainly in the Airborne books, um, it gave me the opportunity to invent sort of an alternate world with different laws of physics and, and different, different creatures. Um, and similarly with the Bat books, um, you know, it gave me the chance to create a new world and sort of invent new laws of, uh, you know, history and, and sort of, uh, you know, technology. So I'm not sure it's anything more, uh, more profound than that, than it's just sort of an intriguing thing that we, we can't do as humans, so it's interesting to imagine. The cicada's drone ceased suddenly, then resumed with renewed intensity. Dusk looked down and down through the branches to the forest floor, impossibly far away. Are you ready? His father asked. Dusk said nothing. Jump, his father told him. I don't want to jump. His voice was an unfamiliar crackle. You're meant to, his father said. Dusk had never left the tree. May, may I go back to the nest, he asked. No. Dusk felt his throat tighten. More than anything, he wanted to wriggle down into the deep furrow where he slept and feel the tree's soft, fragrant bark around him. It's time, his father said. Though his voice was calm, Dusk sensed there would be no more discussion. Are you ready? I, I can't remember all the things you told me, Dusk said in a panic. It doesn't matter, his father replied. Tell me once more, please. His father nuzzled him gently, then shoved him off the branch. Dusk gave a cry, as much in amazement as terror, and twisted around, clutching for something, anything. But the branch was already out of reach, and he was falling, head first now. Wind filled his ears, branches rushed past, the world swelled below him. His entire body trembled, his stomach slewing inside him. 
Instinctively, he stretched his arms and kicked out his legs, spreading his sails wide. That's it, cried Icaron, suddenly alongside him, flaring his own furred sails. Bizarrely, Dusk felt an overwhelming urge to flap.